Welcome the Young Minds of Class 8. I am Nancy Bora, your digital mentor. Today we will be going to start with Chapter 4, Mineral and Power Resources. So, let's get the ball rolling. Today, we are going to learn about types of minerals, distribution of mineral resources, mining, use of minerals, power of energy resources, conservation of power resources, mineral resources of India, sorry, conservation of minerals and non-conventional power resources. First, let us get familiar with some geographical terms. First is fossils. The remains of prehistoric organism preserved in a rock is known as a fossil. Second, mining. The extraction of minerals from a mine is known as mining. Third, ore. Rock material from which minerals or sufficient value and quantity can be obtained is known as ore. Fourth, ferroalloy. An alloy of iron and some other element, metal or non-metal, is known as ferroalloy. Fifth, microelectronic. It, is, it refers to relating to extremely small electronic devices. Sixth, grid. The network of power lines for electricity and supply and transmission is known as a grid. Eighth, gober. The term of cow dung in Hindi. The economic status and development of a country depends upon its capacity to convert the natural resources into useful goods. Minerals and power resources are the basis for, for the growth and development of industry in a country. Rocks in the lithosphere are composed of one or more mineral. The rocks do not, the rocks do not have a fixed chemical composition, while minerals have it. Minerals are composed of one or two elements and they can be identified by their physical and chemical properties. Except fossil fuel, most of the minerals are solid and inorganic materials. They are unevenly distributed and have a variety of impurities. The minerals provide us with metals and chemicals. All types of rocks do not have the same type and quantity of minerals. Some rocks have large quantity of minerals and some rocks have a large quantity of a particular mineral. These rocks are known as the ore of the mineral. No country in the world has all the minerals. The minerals are exhaustible and non-renewable resources. The scientists who study the composition and structure of the earth is called a geologist. Now, let us talk about types of minerals. There are about 3000 different types of minerals found in the lithosphere. Each one has its own characteristic. On the basis of composition, the mineral can be classified into metallic and non-metallic. Sorry, into metallic and non-metallic minerals. The metallic minerals are mostly found in igneous rock, while the non-metallic minerals are found in the sedimentary rock. Let's talk about metallic minerals. Metallic mineral contains metals in ore form. The metals are hard substances and have a typical luster or shine. Iron, gold, silver are metals. The metallic minerals can be ferrous or non-ferrous. The ferrous mineral have iron ore as one of the constituents such as of the ores of iron, manganese, tungsten and chromites. The non-ferrous minerals do not have iron as one of its constituents such as ore of gold, silver, copper or lead. Here are an image of hematite ore and bauxite ore. Now let's talk about non-metallic minerals. Non-metallic minerals do not contain metals such as limestone, mica, gypsum, nitrate, potash, sulphur, etc. The mineral fuels such as coal and petroleum are also non-metallic minerals. Now, let's talk about properties of minerals. The important properties of mineral are as follows. First, hardness. It refers to the resistance to scratching and breakage. Hardness of minerals is measured by Mohs scale. Second, Second, solubility. Several minerals like salt are soluble but quartz is insoluble. Third, color. Color is any mineral's most pressure attribute. Some minerals are colorless, others are green, blue, pink and white. Here are an image of minerals that are very hard. Now, let's talk about mining. The extraction of mineral is known as mining. There are three main types of mining depending on where and how a deposit is located. It is cheaper to mine a substance when it is on the earth's surface or close to it. Many minerals are found deep in the earth. Some might be under the seas, rivers and lakes. Again, minerals may occur as a compact mass or might be widely scattered. Therefore, we have different processes to deal with different minerals. Open cast mining, 
placer mining and underground mining. Here is an image of open cast mining. Now, let us talk about open cast mining. Open cast mining is carried out when extensive deposits lie near the land surface. For example, coal or iron ore. It involves the scooping and stripping off of the mineral bearing rock with the help of huge excavators and power shovels. Let's talk about placer mining. Placer mining is the use of water to extract the heavy material from alluvial or placer deposits. Sorry, heavy mineral. Eh? Extract the heavy mineral from alluvial or placer deposits. One such example is the gold bearing sands. This process uses the gold's high density that makes it sink to separate it from the lighter siliceous matter with which it is found. Since early 20th century, dredging has become the most important method to mine placer deposit. Here is an image of placer mining. Now, let's talk about underground mining. Underground mining is done when the minerals are located deep within the earth. You might have seen shaft mining in movies where miners go down a shaft or a tunnel in a lift. Tunnels are dug to reach ore where it is dynamited and broken into chunks and then taken up through another shaft to a waiting trucks. This is the deepest form of underground mining. Coal, gold and copper are some minerals that are mined in this way. Here is an image of underground mining. Now, let's talk about drilling. Drilling is another underground mining process carried out to extract oil or natural gas, natural gas from deep within the earth. Drilling is done in many ways depending on the size of the opening the type of rock and the level of mechanization. Now, let's talk about some conditions which are essential for mining of minerals. First, minerals should be useful. Second, the concentration of mineral of deposit must be economically viable. Third, the mining area must be easily accessible. And fourth, some rare minerals can be obtained only by special, specialist knowledge. Now, here is an image of oil drilling. Now, let's connect to geography. Asia produces more than half of the world's tin. Now, let's talk about distribution of mineral resources. The distribution of mineral is not uniform throughout the world. Let's talk about Asia. At least 60% of the world's known oil and natural gas deposits are found in Asia, southwestern Asia especially. The area under the Persian Gulf and Indonesia, Malaysia and Siberia produce large quantities of petroleum. Large reserves of coal are found in the Siberia, China, India, Japan, Indonesia and Korea. Asia is the primary source of much of the world's tin and graphite. Tin is specially found in a belt running down in Mele Peninsula to Indonesia. Iron ore is extracted in China, India and Siberia. Iron ore is extracted in China, India and Siberia. Sri Lanka and Myanmar are famous for precious gems and golds Nickel and Platinum are found in Siberia. Tungsten, lead, mag manganese, copper, bauxite as well as phosphates and many other non-metallic minerals are also found here. Now, let's talk about Europe. Coal is found most extensively in Britain, Spain, France, the Ruhr Valley of Germany, Belgium, Poland and Ukraine. Oil and natural gas deposits lie throughout Europe with the two most important regions within Russia and the North Sea. Norway and the United Kingdom have trapped gas and oil from beneath the North Sea. Nickel, tin, bauxite, copper, gypsum, manganese, lead and iron ore have been mined extensively and traded. Marble is found extensively in Italy, precious natural resources like gold and diamonds. Now, let's talk about South America. Andes ranges have large reserves of platinum. Child has reserves of copper and zinc. Other minerals found are iron, lead, zinc, silver and bauxite. Brazil, Guyana, Suriname and Venezuela are am among the world leaders in mining bauxite and aluminum ore. Gold and diamonds are found along the Amazon basis. Gold is found in Brazil, Guyana and Ecuador. Colombia leads in production of emerald. Iron ore and tin are abundant in Brazil. Petroleum is produced in substantial quantities near the base of Andes, especially in Venezuela, Colombia, Peru and Ecuador. Argentina and Bolivia, is, Bolivia export large quantities of natural gases. Let's connect to geography once again. 
an ounce of gold can be stretched into 80 km long wire and flattened into wire as flattened into translucent sheet of 10 into 10 meter in area. Now, let's talk about North America. Enormous amounts of coal are mined in the Appalachians and Pennsylvania. Iron ore is mined near Lake Superior. The Canadian Shield is also a storehouse of minerals and has large deposits of iron ore. Canada has large quantities of nickel. Copper is mined in the Rocky Mountain and around the Great Lakes. Petroleum of black gold is found in large amounts. Major oil fields are located along the Gulf of Mexico in US and Mexico, in the South Central USA and California, and in Alaska and Alberta in Canada. Large amounts of uranium, copper, silver, zinc, nickel, and lead are found in North America. Mexico is world's largest producer of, sil of silver, and Jamaica is leading source of bauxite. Ontario in Canada is, has the world's largest gold mine. Now, let's talk about Africa. Africa's known mineral wealth places it among the world's richest, con richest continents. It is the world's largest producer of diamond, gold, and platinum. A large portion of the world's diamonds comes, comes from South America, Boswana and Zaire. The other minerals found here are copper, iron ore, uranium, cobalt, uh, chromium, and bauxite. Now, let's talk about Australia. Australia is the world's largest producer of bauxite and a leading producer of iron, gold, diamond, tin, and nickel. Kalagurli and Kolgardi areas of Western Australia have the largest deposit of gold. The other minerals found here are lead, zinc, manganese, and copper. Here is an image of Carl Goldie gold mine. Now, let's talk about Antarctica. The geology of Antarctica is sufficiently well known to predict the existence of variety of mineral deposit. But the lack of appropriate technology to cut through the thick layers of ice has prevented mineral exploration in this continent. Now, let's connect to geography once again. The oldest rocks in the world are in Western Australia. They, de they date back to 4,300 4, million years ago, only 300 years after the Earth was formed. Second, the biggest pure gold nugget was found in Australia in 1869 and it weighed 156 pounds. Now, let's talk about mineral resources in our country, India. India is richly endowed with mineral resources. They provide a strong base for industry, but the distribution of mineral resources is highly uneven in India. The Chota Nagpur Plateau, the Dakkan Plateau, and Damodar Valley are rich in minerals, but Indo-Gangetic Indo Plains do not have sufficient mineral resources. Now, let's talk about major mineral and power resources in India. First is bauxite. Bauxite is found in Jharkhand, Lohardaga, Chhattisgarh, that is Korba, Maharashtra, Odisha, and Telangana. Second, chromium. Chromium is found in Odisha, Jharkhand, Karnataka, and Maharashtra. Third, uh, coal is found in Jharkhand, Jharia, Bokaro, and Karampura regions of Jharkhand. Then, we have coal in Odisha and the Talcher region of Odisha. Then we have MP in which we have Sangroli region. In Chhattisgarh, we have Korba region. In West Bengal, we have Rani Ganj. And in Tamil Nadu, we have Neveli for lignite and Telangana. Copper is found in Jharkhand. In, and in Jharkhand, we have Singhbhum, Hazari Bagh regions. Then for Rajasthan, we have Khetri region. Then we have Chhattisgarh, MP, and Telangana. Diamond in India are found in Madhya Pradesh and the Panna region and Andhra Pradesh, Golconda region. Gold is found in Karnataka, and that is in Kolar and Hoti region and Andhra Pradesh. Iron is found in again Jharkhand. In, in Jharkhand, we have Singhbhum and Hazari Bagh regions. In Odisha, we have Kionjhar and Murbanj region. And in Chhattisgarh, we have Raipur, Durg and Bastar region. And then we have Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Karnataka. Limestone is found in Bihar, Odisha, MP, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. Manganese are found in Odisha, in Kionjhar, Mayurbhanj region. Then we have Madhya Pradesh, Balakat, and Jabalpur region, and Jharkhand, Karnataka, and Maharashtra. Mica can be found in Jharkhand, Hazaribagh region, Bihar, Munger, and Gaya region, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and Rajasthan. Now, let's talk about uses of minerals. What are the advantage of minerals? First is, 
minerals are the backbone of industrialization. Second, minerals are the backbone of modern civilization. They are important and chief base of ensuring higher standards of living. Third, even minerals like clay products, gypsum, quartz, sand and limestone used in great quantities to provide comfortable living and better standards. Let's connect to geography. If the metallic content of an ore is lesser than 30%, it is not profitable to extract it. Now, let's talk about some disadvantage of, disadvantages of minerals as well. There are many disadvantages associated with the use of minerals. Some of these are, first, all mineral resources are exhaustible. Most reserves of minerals are likely to be exhausted only exhausted one by one during this century. Second, despite great strides in science and technology, substitutes of some of the existing natural resources are causing harm to our environment. Third, mining of almost all types of mineral releases huge quantities of dust, me, uh, metal particle, etc., causing a great harm to our environment. Now, let's talk about conservation of minerals. Minerals are highly exhaustible and their formation takes place over millions of years. There is need to conserve them as the demand of minerals is increasing day by day to meet the needs of present and future generations. Minerals can be conserved by reducing their consumption, avoiding wastage in production and distribution. Recycling of metal, use of substitutes, better mining methods and discovery of new minerals by using latest technology are some other methods to conserve them. Now, let's talk about power or energy resources. Coal, petroleum and natural gases are the main source of power. The demand have been increasing within the, with the economic development in the world. Recently, the use of atomic energy, tidal energy, solar energy and wind energy has been tried to supplement the increasing demand of power. Here is an image of coal and an oil ring that is the equipment used to drill for petroleum is called an oil ring. Now, coal, mineral oil and natural gas are minerals of organic origin. They are called fossil fuels because they were formed from a plant and animal remains that got buried under the soil millions of years ago. They got converted into hydrocarbons in the absence of air. Mineral oils and natural gas are generally found in sedimentary rocks that were once under shallow seas. Decomposed remains of marine organisms, animals, other marine creatures were buried and converted into oil and gas under heat and pressure of overlying rocks. The oil and gas got squeezed under the pressure of overlying rocks. Today. The reserves are found trapped within layers of impermeable rocks in the, in the anticlines of sedimentary rocks. All sedimentary rocks of the world are potential oil-bearing rocks. However, it is not economically viable to extract oil in every belt. Areas with large deposits are called reservoir rocks. Some sources of energy like coal, petroleum and natural gas have limited reserves and are likely to be exhausted. Some sources, derived, some sources derived from plants and animals can be renewed. The non-conventional non sources of power like the sun, wind, tide, geothermal sources, etc. are inexhaustible. Let's connect to geography again. Cooking coal is the hard, porous combustible residue that is produced when coal is heated in closed oven. Now, let's talk about non-renewable resources. First is coal. Coal is a fossil fuel. It is the product of ancient plant remains that have been compacted and altered by heat and pressure over millions of years. The resulting product becomes a combustible black rock composed mainly of carbon. It is mainly used as combustion fuel to generate electricity and make coke for the steel industry. Today, coal is one of the most widely used energy resources. It is being used for various, of purpose, for various purposes such as heating of houses, as fuel for boilers and steam engines, and for generation of electricity by thermal plants. It constitutes about 70% of total commercial energy consumed in the country. Coal is extracted from the earth by the process of mining. It is advantageous to use coal because it is affordable and reliable. At the same time, it gives out smoke which leads to health hazards. Coal continues to be a valuable energy resource, although questions are being raised about its sustainability in the future as non-renewable resources as well as environmental effects. 
Here is an image of coal giving out smoke. China is one of the largest producer of coal in the world, followed by the USA, India, Australia, South Africa and Germany. India has about 7% of the world's coal reserves. Coal is found in Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Now, let's talk about mineral oils. Mineral oil is also known as petroleum. Petro in Latin means rock and oleum means oil. Petroleum is obtained from sedimentary rocks. The total worldwide, reserve, the total worldwide reserves of oil are estimated, to, estimated at 1000 billion barrels. About two-thirds of this supply is contributed to the country of the Persian Gulf. Presently, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is the largest producer of oil in the world. The Gulf countries along with Russia, Venezuela, Mexico, Libya and Nigeria account for nearly 90% of world's known reserves. Oil is, the f oil, oil is also found in USA, UK, Norway, Denmark, Germany and Netherlands. Oil in our country was first discovered at Digboy in the Assam region and later at Mumbai, at Mumbai High in Maharashtra. Crude mineral oil, when refined, yields a variety of products like petrol, diesel, kerosene, etc. The other byproducts include raw materials for chemical fertilizers, lubricants, synthetic fibers, and drugs. Mineral oil has great importance in the present day industrial world. Till independence, oil was drilled till independence, oil was drilled only in Assam. Now, many new areas in Gujarat and off Mumbai coast, that is Mumbai High, have been discovered and developed. Our total production is about 38 million tons, which is far less than our needs. Now, let's connect to geography once again. The first man to have discovered petroleum was Samuel M. Keir, who in 1848 found it by chance in wells on the banks of the Allegheny River of Pennsylvania in the USA. The first, oil was, the first oil was drilled by Edwin L. Drake at Titsuville in Pennsylvania. Now, let's talk about natural gas. Natural gas is a fossil fuel which is, find, which is found along with petroleum deposits deep under the Earth's surface. Hence, when crude oil is extracted, natural gas also comes out with it. Natural gas gives off a lot of heat and light when it burns, but does not produce smoke. That makes it a good that makes it as a good fuel that makes it a good fuel for use at home. It is also used in industries. Very few countries actually have sufficient natural gas reserves of their own. The main producer of natural gas are Russia, Norway, UK and Netherlands. In India, places like Jaisalmer, Krishna Godavari Delta, Tripura and some areas offshore in Mumbai have natural gas resources. Now, Let's talk about hydroelectric power. The force of flowing water has been harnessed since long for grinding grain and for generating hydroelectricity. It is a clean, non-polluting source which gives electricity at a much cheaper cost than other resources. Only the initial of cost of setting up hydro power plant, turbines and transmission lines higher. Transmission lines is higher compared to other resources. Now, let's connect to geography once again. Other than fossil fuel, there are alternative sources of energy that are tidal power, solar biomass and nuclear energy. 20% of the world's electricity comes from hydro power. Many developed countries of the world, countries of the world are sustaining their industry on hydro power. Example Japan, USA, Sweden, Norway and Switzerland. In India, hydro power is developed and generated by several power plants like Bhagra, Nangal, DVC, Hirakund, Rihan, Tungabhadra, Chambal, Kosi, Mahatma Gandhi project situated on Jog Falls on River Saravati and, and Seva Samudram on Kaveri in Karnataka. There are hydro power projects in the foothills of Himalaya, in the Western Ghats and the Tata Hydel Agency grid. Here is an image of Bhakra Nangal Dam. The problem faced by hydro power in that dam cost a lot of money and take years to build. Moreover, large dams and lakes require displacement of a large number of people and are so and so they are always under controversy. For example, the Narmada project in India. Let's connect to geography once again. 
the world could produce about 1.6 lakh megawatts of power through non-conventional energy sources and also save the environment from pollution. Now, let's talk about non-conventional power resources. Non-conventional sources of energy are the renewable sources of energy that are produced from the sources of sun, wind, water, tides, etc. The increased consumption of fossil fuels has resulted in rapid depletion of these resources. Burning of fossil fuels has created large-scale pollution. With the rising demand of oil, their availability in the near future is also bleak. Hence, the alternative source of energy and renewable source of energy should be promoted to supplement the scarcity of conventional sources of energy. Some of the important non-conventional sources of energy are solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, geothermal energy, and biogas. First is solar energy. Sun is the ultimate source of all energy. Solar power is non-exhaustible. The only limitation is that it can be harnessed only during sunshine hours. Solar cells have been invented that can convert energy of the sun into electricity. The process, however, is commercially more expensive than generation from other conventional sources. Ma uh, mirrored roofs are being set up to tap solar energy for heating rooms and water. Satellites going up in space use solar batteries for providing power. Here is an image of solar panels. Now, second is wind energy. Since ancient times, stored power has been used to drive windmills to grind grain. It has been used to it has been used to propel ships. Recent it has been used to propel ships. Recently, wind power has been used to generate electricity also. But wind power is not totally reliable, reliable as it is highly variable in time, place and intensity. The places where wind power has been developed, large wind farms dominate the skyline in the hilly or coastal areas. Areas where there is great potential to develop this power are the Pacific Northwest Coastal Area and the coastal region of Northeastern USA and Southern California. The Netherlands in Europe has used windmills for many years. Now, the Gujarat and Tamil Nadu coast are trying to trap this energy in India. Here is an image of windmills. Now. Let's talk about nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is generated from uranium and thorium through nuclear fission. These minerals are released in large quantities of energy in nuclear reactors. The United States, United Kingdom and Russia have large nuclear reactors. In India, Rajasthan and Jharkhand have enormous deposits of uranium. Thorium is found along the monazite sands of Kerala. There are six nuclear power stations in India, namely Kota, Narora, Kalpakkam, Kega, Kakra, Kakrapara, and Tarapar. Here is an image of nuclear power plant. Now, let's talk about geothermal energy. Energy produced from the heat of the Earth's interior is called geothermal energy. Temperature increases as we go deep into the Earth's interior. In volcanic regions, the heat energy is available in hot springs and geysers. Geothermal energy is used for cooking and bathing. New Zealand called the land of hot spring and geysers is one of the largest producers of geothermal energy. Yellowstone National Park region in the United States is the leading producer of geothermal energy followed by Iceland, Philippines and Central America. In India, geothermal energy is produced near Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh and Puga Valley in Ladakh. Here is an image of geothermal energy. Now, let's talk about biogas. India leads in converting organic waste, especially human and animal waste and cow dung, etc., into fuel for cooking and lighting are called biogas. The project is aimed at utilizing biodegradable waste in villages and cities. Now, let's talk about tidal energy. They are regular phenomenon on sea coast. Technology is still in its infancy. In recent years, new interest is being shown in hydro energy or energy from water. They are also concerned with the harmful, uh, harmful effects resulting from the use of fossil fuels. Here is an image of biogas and tidal energy. Now, let's talk about conservation of power resources. 
Increasing world population and the demands of more and more people to have higher ambitions have resulted in shortage and exhaustion of mineral resources. Minerals are non-renewable. Once consumed, they become completely exhausted and cannot be regenerated soon. Fossil fuels are also exhaustible resources. Coal and petroleum resources have been dwindling all over the world. The existing resources of power need to be un- urgently conserved, saving them for future generations so that they are not deprived of them. Now, let's talk about the ways in which mineral and power resources can be conserved. First, many metals can be reused by recycling like iron, gold, silver and, silver and aluminium. Second, we should not waste them. And third, using improved mining technology to minimize wastage during extraction. Fourth, judicious and selective mining. Fifth, using cheaper and more abundant alternatives of scarce material, sc- scarce mineral. For example, using aluminium, a mineral abundant in India, in place of copper, a mineral scarce in India in the electrical industry. Sixth, using igno- inexhaustible sources of power insist- instead of exhaustible sources. And seventh, undertaking exploration to identify areas with good mineral deposit which can be mined at reasonable cost. Eighth, minimizing the use of fossil fuels. And ninth, using power saving devices. Let's connect to geography one last time. Energy produced by wind energy does not pollute the air. Giovanni Conti first discovered geothermal, gener- geothermal generated electricity at La Dorello, Italy in ni- 1904. It is estimated that Iceland's geothermal energy could provide 1700 megawatt for over 100 years compared to the current production of 140 megawatt. Now, let's wrap up the class and see what we have learned so far. First, Mineral are composed of one or two elements and they can be identified by their physical and chemical properties. Second, mineral and power resources are the basis for the growth and development of industry in our country. Third, the minerals provide us with metals and chemicals. Fourth, minerals are broadly divided into two groups, metallic and non-metallic. The metallic minerals are mostly found in igneous metamorphic rocks. Iron ore is found in abundance and can be produced at low cost. The extraction of minerals from the earth is called mining. Iron is most widely used metal. It is the backbone of modern civilization. Next is manganese is used in steel making and manufacturing of alloys. Next is copper is mainly used in electrical transmission of making of alloys like brass, bronze, German, German, silver, etc. Next is Mineral resources are unevenly distributed in India. Most of the mineral deposits are in Chota Nagpur Plateau and its surrounding areas and its surrounding areas. Next is that coal, petroleum and natural gas are main sources of power. Then mineral oil is derived from organic material in sedimentary rocks. Next is about 65% of the mineral resources are found around the Persian Gulf. And last but not the least, the existing resources of power needs to be urgently conserved, saving them for future generation so that they are not deprived of them. Thank you class for being with us. I hope that you have learned something. We will meet again in the next class.